Hi everybody, how are you? It's Dr. Emily, podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy, inventor of Nimbosa technology, and I am a functional podiatrist, human movement specialist in New York City. I want to speak to you about orthotics. This is a question that I get all the time, and I have both perspectives as gone through conventional podiatric school and have been fed pretty much the bullshit from podiatry of how every single person needs to be in orthotics, that our foot is not able to support itself with orthotics. If we do not use orthotics, your foot is going to completely collapse and you're going to lose your arch from being trained in functional movement, integrated medicine, integrated biomechanics, and a true neuromuscular approach. So I respect both sides. I understand there's a role for both sides. However, I try to take an approach to this question and to the concept of orthotics from a very unbiased, uh, open approach. So the question begs you, do you need orthotics? A majority of people do not need orthotics. Our foot is designed to support itself. If we actually needed orthotics, it's going to sound kind of crazy, but we would be born, we would come out of the womb with orthotics on our feet, right? It makes sense. So your foot is designed to support itself. Yes, we may be on concrete now. We're no longer on the dirt, so we're not these primal beings running around in the dirt like we used to. However, your foot is still designed to support itself. However, do certain foot types need orthotics? Do certain surfaces or certain jobs or certain uh, movement patterns benefit from the stability of orthotics? Absolutely. So this is the way that I look at orthotics. Orthotics have a role when it comes to people who have to stand all day. If you are a nurse, a chef, a cashier, a banker, you work for the TSA, you're a police officer, a job that you're standing on your feet on concrete all day, there is a benefit to orthotics because standing is extremely hard on the human body. We are not designed to just be standing in one place. We are designed to move. So if your job requires you to stand, then I actually do recommend using orthotics. Another great application for this, because I know a lot of fitness professionals follow my work, is personal trainers. I do recommend using orthotics or something when you're on the floor training clients all day. Your body will start to break down. Every tissue in the human body, regardless of how strong you are, has a tissue stress threshold. When you are standing in one place, you are constantly engaging your plantar fascia. So it's essentially on tension, 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 as you are standing to resist gravity. That is called the reverse windless mechanism. Again, reverse windless mechanism means that you have a baseline tone in your plantar fascia, which helps your body resist gravity as you are standing in one place. That puts a lot of stress on the plantar fascia, obviously. So having an orthotic or something that takes that tension off of the fascia actually does work. Another place that I use orthotics is in a transient state to get my patients out of pain. However, I will tell them that we are using this orthotic transiently, temporarily, just so that I can give a little bit of support to your foot so that it can take a break and then when we get your pain, whether it's post-tip tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, whatever it may be, we're getting in, into a quiescent state. I need to drop that cycle of neuromuscular response around the pain signals, have that drop, and then I can start to build optimal foot strength and neuromuscular activation into the foot. If you don't first drop the pain into this quiescent state and you just try to go into the strengthening, they're most likely not going to respond. The nervous system is too uh, hyperactive. A third area that I do look at orthotics is those that actually do need them in the sense that they may have post-tib tendonitis, grade three, grade four. That means that they probably have a tear in their post-tib tendon. Maybe they have degeneration and they have a completely sublux talonavicular joint. They're, they're midfoot sitting on the floor and they have ankle arthritis. I mean, that makes sense. I'm not, I'm not blinded to the fact of people who actually need orthotics. However, one foot type that I never use orthotics in is a high arched cavus rigid foot. If you're putting something rigid in a rigid foot, and quite possibly in a rigid shoe, do you see how that is countering? You are actually compounding this person's effect and adding to their rigidity. So that is a foot type that I've never, in all my years of doing orthotics, never have used orthotics in a high arch foot. I actually do a, quite, a, quite a good job of pulling my patients out of orthotics. 
if they're coming to me after seeing, you know, another podiatrist or several other podiatrists, a chiropractor, whoever it was that gave them the orthotics and were told that they have flat feet or their arches are falling, I will take a picture of their foot and show them that they have a completely neutral foot. Does that mean that the orthotic now had built their foot into a neutral foot? Highly unlikely. It meant that they probably didn't need the orthotic in the first place. So if you have been told that you need to use orthotics, I challenge you to challenge that and to understand how you can build optimal foot strength. Even if you have pronation, you can still go without an orthotic. In fact, research has shown that if you do six weeks of glute strengthening, you can correct a foot two to three degrees, which is what a standard orthotic does. So again, mild pronation, a little drop of your arch, call it what you want. If you see that, start strengthening your foot. Start releasing your foot on a golf ball, lacrosse ball, rad roller. Again, I don't care what you do. Learn to do what's called short foot. All of this stuff is on my YouTube channel. Start to do barefoot training. Get the skin on the bottom of the foot activated. And then start building that into what's called foot to core training or foot to core sequencing so that you actually coordinate your glutes to work with your foot. So. Again, little recap on the orthotics. For the most part, do we need orthotics? Absolutely not. You need to be getting your feet actually out of those orthotics and stimulating it to the environment around you. I highly encourage thinking about smarter footwear that allows your foot to move in all different directions, has minimal support, minimal cushion, minimal heel toe drop that allows you to optimize your foot. Now, do you need to possibly transition down into that? Absolutely. If you feel like you need to be in orthotics or you've been in orthotics for 20 plus years, then what you do is you gradually pull yourself out of them. Maybe you do some barefoot stimulation and then go back into your orthotics. Maybe you release your feet on a golf ball or cross ball and then go back into your orthotics and you start to find that balance. Again, the orthotics are the most effective when you're standing in one place or depending on foot type and you're doing high dynamic movements. One last thing that I want to add is what's called Noboso insoles. Insoles are not a orthotic. Orthotic controls biomechanics. Insoles are oftentimes accommodative. They're for weight distribution, pressure distribution. And then the Noboso insoles are a proprioceptive insole that are designed to be worn barefoot. I've just designed these. We launched Naboso in January 2017 and then we just launched the insoles. Those are being shipped by the end of August. If you want to learn more about proprioceptive insoles and how you can take away foot pain and improve foot posture from a neuromuscular proprioceptive perspective, please check out nabosotechnology.com, N-A-B-O-S-O technology.com. If you want to learn more about how I treat patients and I practice podiatric medicine from a functional and regenerative perspective, please check out my website, which is D-R-E-M-I-L-Y splichal.com. All of that will be down in the descriptions. And then if you're curious to learn more about our education, please check out ebfaglobal.com. And of course, follow us on all social platforms. Take care. Stay barefoot strong.